going old school, the Ruger P85. Let's check it out. In 1985, the Ruger P85 was developed. It was available in 1987. A very reasonably priced firearm. I think the retail was like $295. A lot of that had to do with the investment castings that they did. But this gun has really stood the test of time. Uh, a lot of people still love these old Ruger P85s and all the P-Series all the way up. Uh, they're very big, they're clunky, they're a little bit heavy but yet there's something about these guns that just make it a lot of fun to take out to the range. Now, a lot of you guys have your original P85, and yet a lot of people have inherited these. And you may be coming to this video just kind of getting some information for this firearm. One thing I'm just gonna tell you up front, these are solid handguns, they're reliable, they're accurate, they're a little clunky, but man, they'll do the job. And this really makes an excellent self-defense, home defense firearm. The Ruger P85, this is an older pistol for sure. And uh, these were of course designed in 85, but not made until 1987. And then the P85 went to 1992. Uh, the real big coup of these pistols is they were coming in at a price of about $295, which was considerably less than most of the other handguns. I'm gonna go ahead and drop the magazine. It is a push magazine release and it is ambidextrous. So you just push it out and then the 15 round magazine pops out. Some of them did come in a 10 round magazine. It comes with two 15 round magazines. And these mag releases, you can hit just either side. You don't have to hit both, but the way they're curved, it makes you think you need to hit both, but you can just hit one and it will release it. Now, one of the reasons that Ruger developed the P85 was military trials were coming up to replace the 1911. And of course, the Beretta M9 won that trial, but actually the P85 performed very well. It passed all the tests, even the 20,000 round torture test. And so these guns are really made solid. Uh, one of the big things about this handgun though, is it is thick. As you can see, it's a very heavy type firearm. And, you know, it's made, though, from aluminum here and then stainless steel at the top. Uh, of course, the blue alloyed version came out uh, first. In fact, it wasn't until 1990 that the stainless steel model came out. This is a 1990 version uh, according to the serial number. And you can check that on the Ruger website if you have one. Now, there were some issues with the Ruger as far as accidental discharges. Uh, there was a, the firing pin could break and then when you decocked it, it could fire. If the gun has been fixed at the factory, there'll be a Mark II right here on the safety. Uh, and they just marked it after, in fact, they're still taking in recall firearms. This one needs to be returned because it does not have Mark II on either of the safety decockers. Uh, or it could have Mark II on the slide. And so that is one thing. If you have one of these and you don't have it marked, you can send it back to Ruger and they'll take care of it. And I highly recommend you do that. Uh, this is a investment casting, and that's one of the reasons why the prices were so low. Uh, the aluminum frame, alloy frame was aluminum cast, and the steel slide, whether it was the blued again or the stainless. And that's one of Ruger's trademarks. It's a double single action pistol, does have the hammer, uh, and then it is actuated with the trigger. And we'll take a look at the trigger pull action. But that just means that with the hammer down, you can pull the trigger and it does actuate the hammer. And then subsequent shots, the hammer's in the rear position. Uh, this is a short recoil operated firearm. Really designed close to the SIG P220 locking system. But it has the 1911 tilted barrel with its link activated. Now, we'll take a look at that when we break it down. 
but there are far less parts with the Ruger P85 than with the 1911. The grips are kind of a Zytel inserts. Uh, with some of the later models with the P-Series, they did come out with a polymer frame or a Zytel frame uh, with the standard stainless steel or blued slide. And those, there's a lot of different models out there that are like that. But this is the original with the aluminum frame. It does have a lanyard ring right here as well. And of course, these were introduced into the U.S. military. Now, they, there were some law enforcement agencies that did adopt this. I think the San Diego Police Department and the Wisconsin State Patrol and some other smaller police agencies. Also, the Turkish National Police adopted the P-85. And guys, if you want something that is really rugged, that's very reliable, and that's fairly accurate. These are not super accurate as some of the later P models. Uh, this is a great gun, though. It still has about 3 inches at 25 yards. Now, when it comes to the decocker, we're going to go ahead and drop our magazine, check to make sure the gun is unloaded. The decocker is right here on the slide. You just pull it down, and it drops the hammer safely. Uh, and then to fire it, you have to bring this back up. Now, there was the DC model that actually spring-loaded the safety back into the fire position. And really, with a double single action pistol, you don't need that frame safety. I mean, the trigger pull is heavy enough to activate as your safety. But you've got to always remember to pop that back up. It's the same way with the Beretta 92. Three dot sights that are dovetailed, uh, and then the rear front sight has a pin. And you can get replacement sights for these as well. And this is a fully ambidextrous gun with a decocker on both sides. And then you have your mag release on both sides. And then here we have our takedown lever. And we'll look at that when we break it down. The aluminum frame has kind of a rough texturized finish all through it. Uh, there are no grip or uh, serrations on the front. And so, you know, it is a little bit slick. And you have these grip panels. Uh, to be honest with you, both of these are where you really grip the handgun but it does give you a little bit of texturing but this is not uh, super aggressive and when you're shooting it you know you can kind of tell that it's a little bit loose a little looser than i like but still it's adequate okay, on the front of the grip you have this little spring you can kind of see it and this is part of the magazine release commander style hammer it is serrated so you're able to grab it and you can fire it in this position if you have the hammer down after decocking like this and if you want to take that single action shot you've got it it has a four and a half inch stainless steel barrel. To check out the trigger pull action, we're going to first test the double action first, and you'll notice the hammer coming back. It's really a fairly smooth trigger pull, and I've heard reports that it's actually gritty, but on this one, it is a really smooth trigger pull. As far as reset, it comes out about right there. It's not a super short reset. And then you have some take up and then your single action right there, which we'll look at single action separately. Have a little take up right here. In fact, it's all the way back. Then a nice crisp break. Now we have our Lyman trigger gauge from Brownells. We're gonna check the double action trigger pull first. 10 pounds, one ounce. Nine pounds, 15.1 ounces. So right around the 10 pound mark. With single action, 5 pounds, 5.7 ounces, 5 pounds, 8.5 ounces. Now guys, during the time of the Ruger P85, there were a lot less choices out on the market. Now this is a Smith & Wesson model 5906, a number of different models that went with the first, second, and third gen pistols. But it kind of gives you an idea that these pistols were just a lot bigger, they were a little more clunky. I think the Smith & Wesson is a little more streamlined. Uh, it does have a steel slide, but they do have the 5903, which has an aluminum frame. Yeah, it's definitely lighter with the Ruger, but not a whole lot. And the price difference was considerably less with the Ruger. So that made it very popular. In fact, the P-Series sold over 2 million firearms. And the weight of the P-85, that's 32.4 ounces. Glock 19, 23.6 ounces. So it's a considerable difference with polymer frame pistols. We're going to be shooting some Remington Government Police 9mm Full Metal Jacket and some old Freedom Munitions. And uh, I want to thank Lula Loaders for making loading much more easy. <laughs> We had zero malfunctions at the range. I mean, the gun just shot as much as we pulled the trigger. Uh, no problems whatsoever. 
Uh, it's been around for a while, and uh, you know, guys, I'm telling you, there's a lot of people that just love these firearms. And again, they are clunky, they're a little bit awkward at the range, but if you're shooting this a lot, you just grow to love it. The grip is not very textured that well, especially on the front and back strap, so you do feel like you have a little bit of a looseness going on. But here's the thing, guys, when this was made in 85, there just weren't that many other options out on the market. And today we're comparing this to a lot of the polymer frame striker fire or even the double single action really quality firearms that are out there. And they're definitely an upgrade, but there's still nothing wrong with taking this pistol out to the range. And it's really accurate. Now to disassemble the firearm, it's a little bit different than normal. We're going to drop our magazine, check to make sure the gun is unloaded. Uh, go ahead and bring it back into the rear position. And right here you have your projector. And there's a little lever and you can just push it down. And it brings this all the way down like this. And then go ahead and release your slide. Now right here is a little bit of a notch. And you're going to want to push out your pin and this brings out your takedown lever. Now it does, it's captive so it doesn't come all the way out. And then just bring your slide forward. Here we have the recoil spring and guide rod. Uh, it isn't captive but it is steel. And I believe they used uh, music wire or piano wire for these. <laughs> and then you have your stainless steel guide rod. Uh, with the barrel it is very reminiscent of the 1911 and you can see the link design. It is a short recoil system. And that's all you do to break it down. Here you can see the interior and we have our ejector right there and of course it needs to stay in the down position. Really nice thick heavy rails uh, and just a very beefy well made piece. For reassembly just drop in your barrel, bring your link back and then put in your guide rod and then we'll bring our slide back over. Want to get it right into that position, snap it, there we go, you just have to find that little notch. When you put your magazine in, it will return your projector. So there we go, let's function check, and we're good to go. One thing I do like about this handgun is it does not have a magazine disconnect. Now they did come in this kind of a card plastic box and uh, of course you get your pistol, you get two magazines. You do get a loader with it. This one just didn't have one. And then of course owner's manual and with this one none of that's here. And you should get some kind of lock. And guys in 1985 this came out at about $295. Uh, today you can find these on the used market. Still very reasonable but around the $350 or so mark give or take. I looked on Gun Broker and they were running around that price range. Uh, and a lot of those were blue and different conditions. So if you're interested in one of these, of course, there are gun shops around uh, that you'll find these are gun shows at times. Now, a little personal story about how I acquired the P85. Uh, my stepfather-in-law passed away last year and my mother-in-law gave this to me to do a little trade for something that was very concealable. We're going to give her something for her to conceal carry. But his grandson, who is a personal friend forever, I'm going to give this to him after I get her hooked up. And he'll have something from his grandfather. Guys, you can still find the P85 and other P-Series firearms out there. Uh, I see them every once in a while hanging around. And again, they're just a lot of fun to take out to the range. Uh, you know, they're reliable, they're accurate. Yes, they're kind of chunky. But man, they sure are a handful when you take it to the range. Guys, if you depend on a firearm for self-defense, whether concealed carry or even home defense, having some kind of legal protection is vital. I'm a member of the USCCA. I've been a member for the past three years and it is just peace of mind. You know that someone has your back if you ever get yourself in a tough situation where you have to draw your firearm. And guys, I'm telling you, if you are carrying concealed, uh, you should definitely have some kind of legal protection. Now I have a link down below in the description to the USCCA membership page. It is an affiliate link and I know that if anything ever goes down, I have a friend with USCCA. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic.
same way with the Beretta 92. It's the same way with the Beretta 9. It's the same way with the Beretta 92. The Ruger P85, this is one that a lot of people love. Um, how many were made? I like them thick. I like them chunky. Then you'll like the P85. 